Hello everyone. Today's talk is titled Twinkle Twinkle Omniscient Star. <laughs> and simply we want to look at how man or how perhaps one man has observed the concept of a star. And this is of course just uh, a very simple talk. Because when we look at life, at first we're not looking at it. At first we're somebody in some situation, in some position, in some shape, in some idea, in some condition, in some way, in some reality. But then as, as, as the human being grows, it begins to see that in its ability and in, it, in its growth, it is understanding also more. So the more alive you are, the more mature you're getting in life. <laughs> so that simply means a mature being, someone who has lived, has seen many dimensions of life. They have seen life. They have the database of the most brilliant ideas to study for the rest of their being. So one needs to see that when you observe memory, it has an ability to transform your sense of self in how you are self-aware of yourself and also how you are, there's also a natural element. Every person has their own style and approach to how they are absorbing into their greater understanding. You know, it is, it is, it is uh, I believe, a simple mind who's detaching things and just being comfortable with it. Because you cannot just do one act and not observe the other. A wise mind observes the whole spectrum, so he does not judge, but is aware of all judgment. <laughs> so his judgment day is pretty much every day, you know? So it's, that's why it's cool. Yeah. So now, to begin, we are all very playfully and beautifully memories of starlight. When you look at who is aware right now, who is communicating, who is perceiving light, it is a sense of association. But it is an association that is in a range of comparison because that's how you can say I'm this person and you're that. Because our similarity um, can be perceived not to be, in a sense, uh, to be a bit distinct, for example. We're human beings with different types of human beings. You know. So how I like to see it is that when we look at things, we are observing reality. And so the experiencer and the observer of this reality has a totally different dimension of understanding in regards to what is happening. So a star is at first just, just a symbol for you. It's an image. It's that child, um, ch children's tale, they say. So, what that means is that when you observe a star, when you observe that, if you, have, if you have scientifically understood what it is, you would still be fascinated by what you're seeing. In other words, it's as if sometimes the mind of man, when it looks at things, it's never, it's, it's always a new look. So, when you look at a star, what you really have is the, is the imagery of your distance and how you are observing that distance. And so there are ways and modalities in which a being can remember his knowing that has allowed him the vision he already has in regards to seeing the greater dimensions of uh, manifestation that one can have in their reality of consideration. It is very important uh, to recognize that before anyone can get into some very deep multidimensional concepts, they need to totally understand two words very well. Nothing and no thing. In other words, imagine if, you know, <sighs> such a distinction. And in your comfort to be in life, then explore these elements. In other words, if you're still thinking about stress, depression, you are too involved in your game of life still. This is a silent process. This is a still process. This is a, a process which must be done with an authentic wonder. As if like you've explored everything and you're like, what else is there of this reality? And so with a joy and love, you're running into the beautiful embrace of uh, your greater exploration. So stars 
are symbols and in your understanding of how you communicate with a symbol you will understand um, reality better and so a star at first is the ideas that that star brings in your mind but if you go into an absolute state of complete presence but an awareness that is not thinking so it's it's like because there's no thought, I can't talk about how it is. It's just there's no thought, right? And you're present. And in that observance, you see that that star, which seems very far, is present in your reality because you are the origin of your reality. So what is mightier than that star is my eyes being able to observe its vastness. <laughs> And this is, of course, a playful um, play on ideas we're trying to observe. I would like to speak now to those who resonate with the understanding of a pilot of consciousness and an advanced communicator. And this is an idea that I have brought up in the sense that to show that there are certain people well, you will simply see your life just kind of brings it to you, brings you here, right? It's just like you come to this platform where you're like, okay, I have observed all life. I have seen my world around me. I've seen my routine job. I've seen my routine thing. I've seen my, I, I have like, you know, uh, 24 years of life under my belt, for example. The beauty of Indian, ancient Indian culture is that they had such an attention, simply the beings that stepped in that land had such an intention to just uh, elevate, to in a sense they were just such great communicators, such great series of thought, that the Upanishads are just, they are, they are books uh, that can never be written by a man or for man, but is the greatest gift for man. <laughs> You must, you must, you must see that totality has an omniscient sense of being. Omniscience is not a term, it is not a definition, it is not something you even need to Google, but you or dic go on dictionary.com, but you can if you choose to. You could go see what it means. But pretty much what I'm saying is that you are an individual association of life. In other words, you're like this body moving around, dancing in life, right? So similarly, um, in observing your sense of being, in observing how you are a communication of life, there is then your own novel passage. It's as if you're going into this new aspect of your reality where the significance of reality is no longer outside. What that means is you, thought you considering outside, inside, in one dimension of existence where there is a potentiality of many is your own limitation. So you're just choosing to eat the first, you know, first, uh, uh, choose the first option on the menu. You know, you're, you're choosing as, uh, what, you are cho what you have chosen, you know. So for a person who has chosen something, where, what else can you do after you've chosen this life is to observe the choice. Because uh, mystics have always known it is, it, is, it is the unknown observance that, in a sense, resurrects you into your greater understanding. And this is, of course, my view. <laughs> but what Mr. Within is trying to say is that you find Mr. Within when you see the totality of the emptiness in your presence. But an emptiness that is all intelligence because it is simply the observance. What that means is if you were to uh, envision something out of a plane, for example, if you were in a plane uh, and you looked out and you just saw the city from that distance, that, that form of observance compared to you standing on the street and looking at the city is a total different intelligence of observance, right? And so multidimensionality means being so sincere and authentic and present in this moment to then you are, in a sense, open to your own reality, which it's always yours. 
you will see that the passage into greater understanding of, let's say, a multidimensional view is done through your own authentic and sincere allowance. What that means is, you, before you even go after uh, this kind of stuff, or before you go towards uh, trying to understand what an advanced communicator is, or the pilot of consciousness, you first need to observe your reality. Because if you still think you're Bob, then Bob is not ready to leave that environment which is keeping a Bob. Bob, if he's willing to, for example, go in nature and simply sit by a stream and be silent and to observe what existence means beyond name, beyond ideology, that awareness is, is such a powerful knowing within this vast unknown universe. And you will become an experience of space and time that can no longer just keep a star in the same way. When you recognize the vastness of your ability as an observer in, the, uh, to, in a sense, work simultaneously in acknowledging reality, it is all maneuvered by how existence is already. And once one is calm and gentle in their own presence, so you've just sat down in the park and you've just breathed, and in your breathing you're just like, okay, I'm somebody, I'm a present, I'm, I'm a person, present, present, right? So in that sense of knowing, there can be no illusion. The illusion is when there is, you think there's something behind you, but you haven't looked. When you look, there's nothing behind you. And you'll realize all your thoughts were just behind themselves. There's a hollowness, you know, to how design is observed beyond its image. I would like to quickly talk about if, if one does choose to work with greater ideas that point to more of an internal experience of profound symbols and profound natural images. You must begin observing design and form to a very existentially sensitive degree where you're allowing the geometry to speak. When you allow the design of life to just be observed as it is without an interpretation, it's as if suddenly the person who was talking too much in the class became silent and the teacher said a profound thing. You know, it's, it's like, it's, it's that moment where you are no longer seeking a story because you are no longer just a character. The character has just immersed in, in the seeking, in the search for the storyteller that he recognized he wants the storyteller. And beings who come into this individuality, who come into human form and understand this existential sense of, uh, of a oneness that's nothing, <laughs> these beings have come here to keep these relationships out of playfulness. Not out of, you need it because it's, it's, it's all about to go to hell. You know, it is, it, that, that, Im that Im imagery is arrogant. That's, that imagery is like wearing ragged clothing to uh, the most important uh, ball of your life, for example. Do you know? And even though a monk or a mystic would not mind, but it is important to understand the value of personality by understanding the value of your presence, being omniscient, being limitless in the moment. 
So you who are judging yourself in the moment, that's just your choice of color and idea to judge yourself. Trust me, in the moment, the moment is like, it's an infinite ability to, bring, to make abstraction. I mean, just listen to my talks. <laughs> so in, in the abstraction of my communication, humanity understands that they too have an, a great ability in the abstraction of conception. So that means your reception is infinite. <laughs> Even though you, your external expression has been temporal. Know thyself and recognize self dissolves into a moment of being in which the knowing that expresses no longer requires the limited technology and not limited but in a sense the technology of language. Language does have certain limitations in regards to just the dictionary effect it has of just giving you shape of, of, of meaning. You know, but uh, regardless, we are now understanding that we can learn more languages. We can utilize more technologies in exploring and going through a very authentic self-discovery. You see, many times, many people know that they are gentle, know that they are calm, know that they have ability. But their idea and their personality uh, is too convinced. So what that means is if they were an omniscient view, they're just looking at just uh, what the person is thinking as a personality, as that program. The programmer does not care about the program because it is always beyond it. Similar to how someone who types stuff on a computer, you know, or, or a programmer, recognizes. <laughs> That regardless if the program doesn't get saved, he still knows the code. <laughs> so it is very profound. It's actually a playful form of meditation to, in a sense, uh, be an experience of death and just observe it as life. <laughs> and also, in a sense of <laughs> manner, be the opposite as well in how the allowance of the first gives you the allowance of the second. And it's all very natural because it is in your natural freedom. And it's, it's as if that moment where Mr. Within just got rid of all those problems and just told you, just go in nature, sit by that stream and observe yourself. Forget about your problems, forget everything and just observe your being, observe the existence and life that you are. That moment gave you such a profound ability and freedom and release because you saw you are not your ideology. You are not who you thought you were. And you are the greater infinite ability to observe more than all that you have observed. Because when you wake up tomorrow morning, stuff's gonna happen that you don't know about. Just like how that happens in every morning. <laughs> so, so it's you are always moving through the vastness of your novelty. As Terence McKenna smiled, not just mushrooms become significant, but all creation becomes significant. Everything present in your reality becomes significant. They told you, uh, oh, objects do not have life. You're forgetting. You are the life. <laughs> you are the life that is giving life a life. <laughs> wow. So pretty much it is all a ex natural, authentic, existential allowance that is very simple because you're observing and completely accepting and acknowledging the complexity. You are like that candle that knew regardless of how much it flickered and regardless if it would go out, it is the intelligence of the light. And so if its time comes, it will be present uh, in the beauty of the sunlight behind it. Myth and story and fantasy and technology is inspiring imagery. But you must understand that this inspiring imagery are just like tools. They are Thor's hammer, but they are not Thor. So to understand Thor, for example, you must see that it is your ability to very directly and seriously and completely and in a moment, in an instant, acknowledge life 
that gives you the freedom that is always yours. Think of it as that moment in the movie Gladiator where his hands were hitting the hay for a second time but in a different field. And the knowing of man is always the beauty of the knowing that will come from the greater unknown. pilots of consciousness already know. Much blessings.